Hey, I'm Ajax. First of all, I want to say thanks to anyone who watched the Iron Farm House 2.0 and subscribe to this channel. That really means a lot to me and brings us to almost 20,000 subscribers. I received a lot of possible feedback on this farmhouse. I'm so glad that many of you like my design and enjoy my videos. However, as it gets more popular, more issues are reported back to me in the comment section, saying the farm is not working or the iron farm is spawning anywhere. So I think this is a really good chance to talk more about the problems and how to make it better. So this video is separated into a few parts. The first part is the 5 rules of iron golem mechanics in Java edition. I will explain everything you need to know before you build a farm. Then the second part is to talk about the problems of version 2.0 and how I fix it. Lastly, I will show you the upgrade version 3.0 and I think it should be the final version. I feel bad that I didn't explain things clear enough in the 2.0 tutorial. That ends a lot of you are having problems after building it. If you are playing on Bedrock, you may skip to the end of the video. I also teach you how to modify this how to make it work in Bedrock. I can see that a lot of Bedrock friends really want to add this to the world. Don't worry my friends, I will do my best to make that happen. Rule number 1. The villager has slept in the last 20 minutes. This one is the most important one and the most common reason why your farm doesn't work. Each villager has a 20 minutes timer and it keeps counting down. Every time the villagers sleep on the bed, it will reset the timer back to 20 minutes, even if they only sleep for a split second. If the timer drops to zero, they will not summon any more iron golem. This is why it is challenging to build an iron farm. You have to let them see the zombie and be able to sleep at the same time. Each villager has his own bed and they will only sleep on his bed. This explains why sometimes we have to break and place the bed to fix it. It is possible that the bed is claimed by other villagers or the player. Rule number 3. The villagers has not detected an iron golem in the last 30 seconds. This one is easy to understand. If villager detects an iron golem in a certain range, he won't summon another one for the next 30 seconds. The detection range is 16 blocks in all directions based on the villager block position. So now you know how far you should build the second iron farm. You have to keep all the iron golems out of this area so it won't stop this farm. This is also why some iron farms designed to drop the iron golem more than 16 blocks below the villagers to increase the efficiency. The faster the golem disappear in the area, the better the farm efficiency. Rule number 3. The villager has not been near a summoning in the last 30 seconds. This one isn't that important, just don't put different groups of villagers too close together. The villagers from other iron farms should be more than 10 blocks away and that should be fine. Rule number 4. Blah 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 blah. Easy way to explain that is that there are two methods to summon iron golem in Java when you follow the first three rules I just mentioned. Three panic villagers or five villagers gossiping. The most common one is one zombie with three villagers like this one here. To cause the villagers to panic, they have to see either a zombie or a pillager. They summon the iron golem when all three of them are panicking. These mechanics work day and night without stopping. On the other hand, there is a really simple one that you just need to put 5 villagers together with 5 bats. They will summon an iron golem when they gossip during daytime. This one is the best early game iron farm because you don't need a zombie. Now switch to daytime and see how it works. Finally, it took 2 minutes to start summoning. Ugh. The last rule, a fairly spawn point for the golem is found. When a villager is summoning an iron golem, it will pick a target block at a random location. The target block will check the block below has a solid top surface. Not only a full block has a solid top surface. An upside down stairs slab trapdoor also has this surface, so the golem can spawn on these blocks. The target block also checks the two blocks above it. If one of the blocks is full block, then it cannot spawn the iron golem, which means the iron golem requires a three blocks tall space to spawn. One interesting fact about iron golem is that it can spawn inside one deep water, unlike other mobs. That's why we can use these mechanics to build the water canal and send the golem to the place we want. Another thing you should know about is that they can spawn inside long solid block. When you're building the farm or designing a new one, you should always avoid the situation like here. The iron golem could spawn inside the stairs or the slab, and that means they could spawn inside the house and kill the zombie. That's something you never want to happen. 
So now you know it's very important to learn how to spawn proof the farm. You should always put non solid block on the top so that you can control red iron ground spawn. These are some very common blocks that I use when I design my farm. One interesting fact is the two blocks above the target block cannot be watered. So that means that the golem cannot spawn in a free block deep water. I got another useful tip when you try to spawn proof the ground surface around the house. Instead of placing carpet and leaves all around, you can use a shovel to make dirt path. Dirt path is also considered as a long solid block. The last thing I need to talk about is the spawn radius. The villagers are standing on the back, but they are still counted as the same height as the back, so the red wood is the center of where the villagers stand. The spawn radius is 6 blocks above and 6 blocks below. Since the target block is checking the block below, so the highest level available to spawn iron golem is 5 blocks above. On the other hand, the lowest level to spawn is 7 blocks below. That's why in the 2.0 version, the villagers are designed to stay more than 10 blocks away from the ground. The horizontal radius is 8 blocks based on where the villagers stand. If you take a look here, you can see that the villagers can move freely in this 2x5 area. When we extend 8 blocks to our direction based on this area, it will show you the maximum range to spawn an iron golem. Let's give it some time to spawn a golem. Alright, an iron golem just spawned, so now you have the idea how far it should be to build another house. Make sure it is more than 8 blocks away from the villagers. This rectangular box shows the entire spawn area and it is 17 x 13 x 17. If Iron Golem is spawning outside the farm, this could help you to find out where to spawn proof. It is also why it is recommended to build this on a flat surface. That's it, that's all I have to say about the Java mechanics. I hope this could help you to find a better location to build and find out what's happened when the farm is not working. I'm already feeling exhausted by just editing and explaining things in 6 minutes. I'm not really good at speaking English, so now I will show you how to fix the version 2.0 without talking. Let's go!